Welcome to this video. Today we'll be talking about uh, thermodynamics and how to do some turbine calculations. This is especially applicable when you're working with things like jet engines or, or developing uh, power using water. A lot of times on dams they'll run water through a turbine and uh, generate electricity that way. This is a really diverse way to, uh, or this is a really diverse problem that we can solve and uh, it applies to many different concepts. So, let's get started. What have we got? I've got a turbine that is well insulated in the housing and has a steady state. So, it, uh, the derivative of the properties of the system with respect to time is zero. And we have a mass flow rate, 20 kilograms per second, a temperature of 320 degrees Celsius, and a uh, velocity of 25 meters per second. I should also say that this is steam because it does matter what material it is. So what do I want to find here? I'm going to ask myself, what is the pressure at this state to produce all this? Uh, there's only going to be one pressure that will match up with all of these conditions, and I want to find out what it is. And to do so, just as an overview, uh, you have to know two aspects of this state and two aspects of this state to know all of them. You have to know at least two. Over here I know that it's saturated and I know a pressure. So these are two things that will allow me to know everything about the state. Over here I have a temperature, but this mass flow rate and this velocity aren't things that will allow me to easily fix the state. So I'll show you how you can solve for some parts of this side um, and fix that state. This is a lot to work with, especially if you're approaching these problems for the first time. So my advice would be to not worry about um, all of these things yet. Just start with the fundamentals and write those fundamental equations down. I'm going to write uh, both of mine down right now. My first uh, fundamental equation will be a uh, control mass. So I'll say differential with respect to time equals the sum of the mass flow rate in minus the sum of the mass flow rate out. And what's my second fundamental equation that really applies here? My second equation, which I will write in red, is the control energy of the there we go. And that's a big long one. I'm going to say thermal minus shaft work rate and then plus mass flow rate in and then I'm going to multiply that times the enthalpy in plus velocity in squared divided by 2 plus potential energy minus mass flow rate out times enthalpy out plus velocity out squared divided by 2 plus potential energy out. And that is the other fundamental equation that we can work with. I like to start with the simple guy and I think it really helps me when I go to work with my more complex equation and simplifying. So what can I do here? I know that I'm at steady state, so I know that the derivative with respect to time is going to be zero, so this whole differential goes to zero straight off. And then I can subtract this over here, so I'm going to imply that my sum of masses in equals my sum of masses out. And I know that I've got one entrance and one exit that eliminates my sums to that mass flow rate in equals mass flow rate out, which would imply that I can use, in place of both of these, a generic mass flow rate. That eliminates these two unique guys and makes it one symbol. Now, this big long guy, uh, why don't we just try to simplify that? So I got steady state, which makes your differential go to zero. I'm well insulated in my housing, so there's no 
thermal energy that I have to work with. I can eliminate these subscripts. We're working with steam and every problem I've ever done in thermodynamics with steam has made potential energy negligible. That simplifies us quite substantially. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite our equation here. That's going to be 0 equals our negative shaft work plus a generic mass flow rate times the quantity of enthalpy n plus velocity n squared over 2 minus generic mass flow rate times enthalpy out plus velocity out squared over 2. And that is easier to work with. Uh, I'm going to get my board organized and be right back. Okay, so huh, we uh, this is what we've simplified everything down to. And we have 0 equals our negative work uh, shaft work rate plus mass flow rate times this quantity minus mass flow rate times this quantity. Much simpler. If this is your first time, or if you're new to this sort of thing, I like to break it down into steps because it makes it simpler. I, If I was an English major, it would be more simple, but since I'm engineering, it's simpler. <laughs> so I, I look right here, and I look right here, and I know that saturated water at a pressure means that it is a fixed state. Over here, I have a temperature, and then I just have mass flow rate and velocity, but I can't fix the state with that. So in order to solve the problem, I'm going to have to know how to fix this state. Uh, so what can I put numbers in here? What is known, what is unknown? I've got a work rate, and uh, I know that that is 10 megawatts of shaft work. So that's accounted for. Maybe I can use my green marker and say that that's accounted for. I've got a mass flow rate right here, 20 kilograms per second. So I know that these mass flow rates are accounted for. I have a velocity out, so I know that this velocity out is accounted for. I have a velocity in, so this velocity in is accounted for. And I have a fixed state here, which means I can find enthalpy, which means that this enthalpy is accounted for. But I cannot fix the first state here, which means that I must have to find this. I have one unknown, one equation, and that is solvable. So I'm going to solve this equation for this enthalpy n. Um, if you don't want to sit through the basic algebra, you can skip ahead here. Here we go. So my first thing I'm going to do is subtract this over to this side, this whole term, and say negative mass flow rate times enthalpy n plus velocity n squared divided by 2 equals negative shaft work. I should be putting subscripts here. I apologize, I have not. And then minus mass flow rate times enthalpy out plus velocity out squared over 2. Ooh, that's a stretch. Now, I can divide this mass to this side and I can multiply everything by negative 1 and that will reduce my negative signs to positive signs, which are much funner to work with. If I was English major, it'd be more fun. So I'm going to say enthalpy n plus v, or velocity n squared divided by 2, put that in parentheses, equals negative, sh I'm sorry, positive shaft work over my generic mass flow rate, because I divided that over plus, because I divide, multiply by negative 1, and divide my enthalpy out plus VE squared over 2. Finally, if I subtract this guy over here, I will have isolated my enthalpy in. And I started that too high. So I'm going to say enthalpy in plus velocity squared divided by nine. What have I done? My thermal professor just rolled in his grave. Equals work rate over mass rate plus enthalpy n plus VE squared over two. Now I'm subtracting 
this squared over 2. So I can share that denominator minus the i squared over 2. And we are good. We can now solve. Let's plug in some numbers and see what we can get. First thing, solving for hi, I know that this is 10 megawatts divided by mass flow rate of 20 kilograms per second. Plus enthalpy out. We'll have to go to uh, NIST to calculate that. Plus VE squared. So that's going to be 90 meters per second squared minus 25 meters per second squared, all divided by 2. So let's go to NIST and see what that equals. Welcome to NIST. Uh, if you've never used this before, I'll do a quick introduction. This comes for free in the back of like every textbook ever, and it's a really, really common software. So um, you've probably seen it before. If you've never used it before, here's how you can use it. Um, I always go to options and say my units first, and I'm working in degrees Celsius for this for this uh, current problem, and I want a mass basis and not a molar basis, so always choose mass, and uh, kilograms is fine, uh, meters cubed is okay, and I'm given pressures in bar, so I want to use bar for this problem. Other than that, I think we're looking pretty good. I'm going to say OK and come over here and choose my substance. Um, in this case, we're working with steam, so I'm going to choose water. And now I can calculate um, a lot of different things. Uh, I can do s saturation points at equilibrium, specified state points, isoproperty. Uh, if I go to specified state points, we're going to use this later in the problem, but if I say I've got water at 251 degrees Celsius and it's at a pressure of 2 bar it will automatically fill in the rest and if this isn't enough then I can come over here to options and say reference state I'm sorry not reference state options and uh, properties and I can add in like volume internal energy CV value quality quality is a really useful one in some even the sound speed which I think is a really cool thing so now I can go over here and calculate a saturation curve because uh, my second state is saturated liquid or gas coming out. It's steam, saturated steam. So I'm going to vary my pressure, say OK, and then my initial pressure is 0 0.06 bar. My final pressure is also 0 0.06 bar. And I'll just say OK. And so saturated is going to be 36.159 degrees Celsius. And my uh, vapor enthalpy right here is 2566.6 kilojoules per kilogram. And that's what we will be using on our problem. Now NIST gave us 2566.6 kilograms per kilojoule. I'm sorry, kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, if you can read that, you get extra credit in your class. <laughs> so, let's simplify. Enthalpy in equals, and I'm going to... I don't like this megawatts unit. It doesn't play well with the other units, so I'm going to say 10 times 10 to the 6th watts over 20 kilograms per second. And then I'm going to... And then uh, I will simplify this, and that simplifies to 37, 37 .5. And when you square a meters per second, it suddenly simplifies to joules per kilogram. So joules per kilogram. 
Uh, it's one of those really weird, quirky things that you find in math and physics. I don't know the exact reason why, but I always had to do that in my thermodynamics class, and hopefully that trick helps you as well, because when your units don't work, your life is horrible. <laughs> now, uh, we got to run a unit conversion and say 1 kilojoule over 1,000 joules. And that should give us uh, the unit that we want, kilojoules per kilogram. Moving on to the next line. I'm going to start writing over here because it is just easier to be a left-handed guy on this side of the whiteboard. <laughs> FLPN equals 500 kilojoules per kilogram plus 3.7375 kilojoules per kilogram and then adding on our 2566.6 kilojoules per kilogram that there we have a converted unit and that just simplifies by adding them all together to say our enthalpy in is 3070.375 I'm sorry, 0.7375 kilojoules per kilogram. Running NIST, um, now we have 0 0.06 bar and we can find our enthalpy. We just use NIST to find our pressure. So to let's go to NIST and find that pressure. Here in NIST, um, we'll go over here to calculate, and this time specified state points because it's not a saturated uh, liquid or gas or anything that's coming in. But we do know two different properties that are coming in. So I know my enthalpy, and that's going to be 3070.375 kilojoules per kilogram. And I also know that coming in is going to be 320 degrees Celsius. And that's going to give me a bar pressure of 19.9 bar. There you have it, folks. So that'll equal 19.9 bar. You can find a uh, linked directory of all of my tutorials here. And remember, you can always post a question to our Facebook page, Joko Engineering Help. I'm sorry, facebook.com slash Joko Engineering Help. And you can always post a question to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Joko Engineering Help. Anytime, 24-7. Hope this video helped. Please subscribe because if this helps you. Subscribing is the way to help me back. And I will see you next time.